fully utilizing um, and cross-linking, I think it's it's magic. Like everybody should be publishing way more than they are right now, in my opinion. Welcome to the 4 a.m. report. Let's face it, we all have to market. Large or little, it's harder than ever to stand out in a cluttered space of one-size-fits-all and copycat marketing moves. Welcome to the 4 a.m. Report, a micro-podcast that brings you valuable conversations with people on the marketing dilemmas keeping them up at night. Here are your hosts, contrarian marketers and creative clutter cutters, Susan Diaz and Will Lamont. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the 4 a.m. report. Susan, hi there. Today, we're going to, it's, it's you and I, Susan, today. This is really based on a lot of stuff, questions, and um, uh, yeah, questions we're hearing from clients and people that we work with. Because, you know, everybody wants to be recognized by the SEO overlords that rule us all. Um, right. And one of, one of the bits of advice we give to them is you got to up your publishing. Um, you know, you can't just be posting once a month or once every two weeks on your blog. You really do need to up your publishing. That is one easy way for a small business to start mm-hmm. getting some of that SEO magic working for them. So we're going to talk about two different ways you can easily, without too much extending of your bandwidth, um, without too much extra stress, um, become that publishing house that we want you to become. So Susan, why don't we start? What are we going to talk about? Let's uh, start with the easier of the two which is the the writing part of it. Like, okay. what do you do if you are currently given to um, writing long form pieces of any type? What can you do with that to increase your publishing? Um, that said, we should probably anchor this in the fact that pretty much every website has a blog section. So at this point in 2021, this is an area that's like a quick win. Everyone's already publishing mm-hmm. something, like start there. So the way we like to look at it is that most long form pieces, whether they originate um, as like a, you know, a report or a, like a, like an ebook or something that has been created, or if you're taking a podcast interview or a couple of podcast interviews that you've had on the subject, and then you're combining those points and creating blog posts out of it, right? So I think those tend to be the two most common ways in which people create it. Like really creating 500 word blog posts on a one-off basis. I think we should put that to bed. Susan, I think that's what a lot of people, if we wanted to take a step back and say, traditionally, that's what people think a blog has to be, right? You know, a a well-researched, you know, 500 to 750 word piece, which is great. It is wonderful to have those. But we want you to um, expand your mind here, everyone, (laughs) about about (laughs) how we can, how we can kind of approach blogging in 2021. So say I do have, um, I've, I've written a, a blog post based on my a transcript from a podcast interview with you, Susan Diaz, and I'm really happy. I put up my 500 word blog post. What would you advise, I guess, or, or, or let, let to talk us through what we could be doing additionally with this material? Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that, that's a good example. Let's use that. So for example, this, this episode itself of the podcast could turn into a fairly long written piece. And it does. We, we mm-hmm. do a written piece based on every one of them. So in that written piece, typically to keep it um, consumable and give, give the highlights of it, um, we would we structure ourselves in our interviews and in our planning itself, whether it's with a guest or without, um, into sort of having an outline, right? So you're going to introduce a topic. You're probably going to talk about it in depth and have two to three points that you will illustrate through a 20 minute interview. And then you might have a conclusion in which someone's recapping the points for quick learning. So that, to my mind, if your goal is increasing publishing, and again, guys, this is probably highly obvious to people in marketing and many agencies practice this on the regular that said, it's it's easy enough to make this mainstream and most people should. So um, this straight away, the four sort of blog posts I would do would be the point, the first point we're making is don't create on the fly, right? So we would convert that into a short blog post being like how to quickly move from creating on the fly to systematizing your blog post. So that would be a blog post for us right there. Then the second part of it, I think, and this is what many people tend to, to miss is that a blog post even if it's, I mean, written is the method that most people recognize. And it is also the way in which the SEO gods like read you in the system. So you do need the written word. That said, 
your your blog does not need to be populated only with that. So think about if you're recording the podcast or if there's been an interview that has factored into your written piece or whatever it is, going back to your example, a small snippet of the video itself from this, which makes a key point, maybe the the you know the roundup, which quickly r- talks about two or three things, that can become a video post within mm-hmm. your blog. And then mm-hmm. in order to keep it um, recognized, you're potentially posting it on LinkedIn or wherever it is on social that you're posting it. So grab the text that you used to introduce your post on there and, and put it on your website as well. Because bear in mind, so many of us are creating for social media and for platforms, third-party platforms, whether they are podcasts or you know social media or any one of those, mm-hmm. you do want to make sure you're capturing it on your website, right? And it seems really obvious, but I think many people miss that step of posting it onto their own blog. It's so true. And, and one of the things when we do start working with new clients, Susan, we go and look through their social media feeds, especially their LinkedIn feeds, because the LinkedIn post, you know, is, is quite an, it can be an intellectual, um, longer than, you know, an Instagram type post that you might write. Um, and we're like, oh, see what you wrote there on Wednesday and see what you wrote on Friday and see that little video you used with each of those posts. Let's take that copy and that video. And there's, you know, all we have to do is add a headline or two, maybe add the intro and outro. Um, or introduction and conclusion to the writing. And we've got two blog posts where you're zeroing in on a specific point and you've got some supporting video or audio that, or an audio clip that you've got with it too. So that's something a lot of people, as you're saying, um, don't think that maybe what I'm writing on LinkedIn and spending all that time trying to sound really smart about this could literally become mm-hmm. a blog post with a little bit of extra effort. Are yeah. there any pitfalls? Are there anything, any, any no-nos for using this type of method to populate my blog post? Like, should I be worried about a character word limit, a word minimum? Should I no. be worried about repeating myself? Like, you know, I'm, I'd be concerned that I might maybe repeat I'm myself too much. I think what you do want to do is, I'll deal with that repeat thing in one quick yeah. second. But what I do, what I would say is cross it and say, listen, this one point was is a part of a wider blog post on this subject. And, and then cross link to that and then have the series. If you go look at the, the, the marketing big wigs like Neil Patel or whatever, the number of pieces that he has that are cross linked to each other is why he's at the top of every single um, SEO list if you go and look for digital marketing, right? So essentially, whenever there's no such thing as too much um, too much publishing, in my opinion. Obviously, you want, a, you want quality. You want to mm-hmm. keep it at an 80%. Don't aim for 100%. Nobody gets there. But, you know, keeping it at a solid 80%, clearly understanding who your audience is, not just like throwing rubbish up, but mm-hmm. fully utilizing um, and cross-linking, I think it's it's magic. Like everybody should be publishing way more than they are right now, in my opinion. We're going to talk about another way mm-hmm. um, where you can be using something that you probably have stored on your computer somewhere. Um, and if you're not using it, you should be. So I want to set this up with a, with a, a bit of a an illustration of why this is so important to your point about SEO points for small business will. Like as we do, like we ourselves function in this small business economy and we, many of us are committing to working with more small businesses. Um, we ourselves try to find people that we'd like to work with, whether it's consultants or, you know, whatever. And anytime you go and just search, that you're not going to find them. You're not going to find a plethora of local options of people who are small businesses. You're going to find the big businesses who put a lot of SEO dollars into it, right? So when people ask, what is it that I can do to improve the SEO? Should I be hiring, quote unquote, the SEO guy? You know, nobody fully understands what the SEO guy does. So my answer is usually exactly the same, which is the number one thing you can do is just keep incrementally increasing the amount that you publish. The most underutilized Mm -hmm. piece of content that pretty much all of us are creating en masse, which is recordings or your Zoom recordings, right? So so think about the average, um, let's say you have an eight member round table that you're running once a month or once a quarter. What would you then do with it? Um, If people are showing up to these events and they're willing to be interviewed and they you you want to have some pre stuff right you want to have a form or something where they consent to the use of their um their materials so if they do and if you have that consent the first thing that you want to do is go through that recording break it up into like a few themes maybe you asked three or four questions and everybody answered and you might want to pick question number one and provide illustrative from three if you're not mm-hmm. using the video 
you take the transcript and then break yeah, that you can get some writing pieces, some social copy, all from that for sure. And we've done that with clients where we've taken some of their events and roundtables and turned them into something as big as white papers. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, of course, lots of social content. Another thing too, Susan, that people, um, and we've started doing this in the past year or so, um, it was kind of an aha moment. So one of the things we do when we start working with new clients to get to, to know them, to help them with their positioning um, and, and UVP and to understand the pain points that their o- target audience has, we conduct mm-hmm. something called what we call market research interviews. Basically fancy yeah. a fancy term for the client saying, here are three people in my world that Will or Susan, you can go and interview them and find out, you know, why did they choose to work with me? Um, you know, what 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 were what were their issues when they started working with me with me? How did I help them? So we kind of do like speaking uh, you know, to their body of work, right? Yeah, like we, we speak can, to them. Yeah. yeah, we do these interviews with with our clients' audience, a couple, a handful of them, and we record them on Zoom. We get their permission. Everybody shows up looking reasonably pretty because they know we're recording it. And we actually from that, not only do we get insight and information for us, their marketing team, to use in marketing, um, which is wonderful. We also often will turn those recordings into either client testimonials, little clip it, um, little, uh, or, or a little a case yeah. study, a video case study. We'll, th- we'll, yeah. s- we'll slap in some, some slides, some explanatory graphics to, to set it all up um, and edit it into a nice tight two minute um, piece of like a case study that, 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 that the client then gets handed and they love that sort of thing. So, I mean, yeah. even that we've, 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 taken something that we originally wanted to just get some insight into. And we're like, we should be not just doing that. Like, this is a great opportunity to get some great content for our clients. So that's it there, folks. I mean, there's there's lots and lots you can do with like a, a, we we like to say that from a 90 minute recording or a 60 minute recording even Mm -hmm. of an online event or interview, you should be able to make at least 15 pieces of content. Yeah, um, it's so true. And I guarantee, I guarantee for those of you listening out there who are maybe a spark is igniting in their brain hearing this, I bet you you are sitting on a ton of unused or underused content. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're losing sleep over a marketing related problem, let us know. Drop us a line at cp.digital. Sweet dreams. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs>